What's going on everyone? This is Robert Anthony and this is Anthony Talks Too Much and I am so excited to come to you after so many months. Literally, I have been off the grid, barely on social media, haven't done any YouTubing. And the reason is, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, so much has happened since the pandemic for all of us. And a lot of us had a lot of loss. Um, family members, I'm talking debt, I'm talking financial, I'm talking job. All of those things happened to me this year, just like many other people, but I hope we are all coming out of this stronger now. Here in the US, I'm recording this, it's May 2021. And you know, if you think about it, the pandemic was really only a year. And that one year is such a huge amount of time and hopefully growth for people. You may have remembered me from doing the shirtless and scruffy series and that was back in Dubai when the pandemic hit and I was still cabin crew and we were all in lockdown and I wanted to motivate people. I wanted to send an inspirational message and you know, encourage people to use the lockdown as a time for personal growth and to accomplish some things that they either didn't have time to do or were procrastinating on doing. So I figured I wanted to be a little cheeky. I would do it shirtless to get, you know, some attention and uh, spin a positive message at the same time. So. I'm trying to think of a way to give a summary of what I'm gonna talk about, but then I end up talking too much. So as you know, I got a lot to say, so let's just get started. I got my tea right here, all right? So as you know, you're probably watching this and you understand that many people were laid off from Emirates Airline. Unfortunately, when the pandemic hit, they laid off, I think the number was 30,000 people and it was a surprise. We had no notice. Uh, there was no like internal memo making us aware of what was going on. Uh, it was pretty much like a group of the first people that were going to be fired essentially or redundant is the term they use there. Um, it, they were called into the office for a business update and they came out with a letter thanking them for their service and explaining to them, you know, the conditions of this redundancy. And then of course the news spread like wire, spread like wildfire throughout, you know, the community of pilots and crew and also internal employees. And, you know, then the rest is history. I'm not here to do a YouTube tell all. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure many people left and uh, shared how it happened and their feelings uh, during that time. And it was just something that I didn't want to go online and really speak about because, you know, it's a hard state to be in that emotional state and not be so negative. And while there are many things I am not happy about with during my time of employment and some of the way they treated us and especially how they handled the firings, I will say that on the record, I don't want to come off as very negative or ungrateful because working there for that company and living in Dubai was one of the highlights of my life and I will forever cherish it. I had so many wonderful experiences that I'm so grateful for that overshadow all of the other bad things. And there's gonna be bad with everything, right? I mean, no job, well, let's not say that because that's a limiting belief, but <laughs> everything is gonna have pros and cons. And in life, when you go through the bad stuff, it just makes the good stuff even better, right? So. While one day maybe my story will come out and many other people's stories will come out on some of the truths and surprising things about what it's like to work for that airline, this is not the focus of the episode today. What I do wanna talk about today is kind of the overall concept of letting go and how much I grew during the pandemic, um, even through adversity. And I will admit that leaving Emirates was very tough because I think many of us were in a position where we were happy and we were comfortable and we kept talking about wanting to leave, but no, most of us probably wouldn't have done it if it wasn't done to us because it's very comfortable situation there. You have to remember living in Dubai as a cabin crew is a totally different experience than just living in Dubai as an expat. Um, so there was a kind of a grie grieving process because you know, I missed my my life there. You know, I missed when I came back to the US, it was tough because, you know, I missed being able to just drive to my beach down the street or, you know, go to brunches with my friends or easily get around, you know, to literally whatever you want to do. It's in Dubai. I mean, the lifestyle there is crazy fun for people that want to make the most of it. And it was hard to leave that when you weren't ready. And of course you leave with rose colored glasses, right? So you leave with remembering all the good and not 
how tired the job made you or how aggravating some of the work days were or, you know, all the negative things, all the health problems you had, all the sickness you had because of the amount you were flying. So I look back on the good memories and I'm so grateful for them. And now being where I am a year and almost a half later, you know, I did a lot of growth this year. And part of that is I really grew into spirituality and self-improvement. And I think if you guys are not doing any sort of like meditation or personal growth or reading self-help books, I would recommend you to start this now. You know I became a fan of all of this when I did my YouTube vlog series about the 5 a.m. club and how a cabin crew can use the principles of it to improve their lives. I'll link that somewhere if I can figure out the editing. <laughs> um, so I really wanna encourage you guys to do that because it made such a big difference in my life and the way that I can just handle the world and what happens and my perspective has completely changed from just even a year ago and I really have um, you know, mindfulness and all of these programs that I've looked into to thank for that. And also I wanna thank my friend and life coach Mahi Amin. If you are not aware of who she is, she was a colleague of ours, beautiful person, magnetic energy, and she found her path during the lockdown and studied life coaching and she then snowballed like wildfire. Now she's written a book, it's about to be released. She's moved to Bali, she's starting her own coaching business. This girl's on fire and it's because she tapped into her authentic self, found her path, and then the universe opened for her. And I wanna talk about that today because discovering how to do that is gonna make your life so much easier. And I am, no spiritual expert or anything. I am just starting in all of this, you guys, but I wanna tell you my personal story because it's an example of how when you really just let go and give in to this alternative way of thinking, that magic really does happen. And I have to preface that by saying this is coming from someone that is so stubborn. I was so stubborn as a kid I did not even want to hear about meditation. I couldn't go through a yoga class because I could not stand to be in silence for 60 minutes. So I had that sort of fire and energy and lack of patience. I definitely got that from you know my father's side, the Italian blood in me. And it took a long time for me to learn how to quiet my brain, but I wanted to see facts. So all of this like woo woo stuff, I wasn't impressed with it by many years, so I just disregarded it. And it really wasn't until the pandemic and the lockdown that I started really trying to just see where it took me and it ended up working. So it all started when Mahi recommended a book to me called Letting Go, because at this point I was at a really low point. I was back in the USA. We were literally still in a lockdown. Like I came back and the gyms closed again from the first time. And I came back around September or October. And <clears throat> it was just a dark period of my life. My uncle had passed away. I had a, a condo uh, that I happily bought when I moved to Dubai and I was renting it out because I thought it was a great investment while I was living overseas to have people in it paying off the mortgage. That condo ended up being a nightmare. The tenants were a nightmare. They smoked inside of it and it's all resulted in a lawsuit and I wasn't able to rent the condo and then I couldn't afford the mortgage because I lost the job. So I decided the best thing to do was to sell it. And I thought because the housing market was on fire, it would sell so fast. Well, there were some problems along the way and needless to say, it was on the market for about four months. So that's a really long time in real estate, especially when um, things are, are moving fast and things are getting above asking offers. So I was starting to get nervous, but I realized in retrospect that I was energetically blocking this thing from happening to me. This will show you that it's, it's true. And you know, I was working with Mahi at the time. I started some coaching sessions with her and she was really opening up my perspective of um, you know, the world and the universe and how to tap into my authentic self and how to do some things to help with limiting beliefs. But she knew the biggest trigger for me was holding on to everything. I have a very strong ego and I wanna control everything. Um, 
you know, my mom was an executive at a huge corporation. From a young age, I grew up really learning that, you know, you have to fight tough, you have to fight hard, how to negotiate, all of these things. Um, don't let people walk all over you. So it's very hard for me to uh, just surrender to a stressful situation, which is what Mahi essentially wanted me to do. She said, you have to just let this go. Trust is gonna happen in the right time. Of course, it's easy to hear that, but it's not really easy to, to believe it inside, especially when you're stressed about money. Because at this point, I was in a financial nightmare. All my money was tied up into this house that I couldn't get sold, and things were very, very stressful. And I wasn't sure what was gonna happen because if I didn't sell this place, I would have to like move into it without even being able to pay for it. And uh, my body is tensing up as I'm speaking about this because I was so stressed, you guys. And I'm not trying to get sympathy or something. I'm just trying to show you like, um, you know, where I was in my life. I was in a very low place, negative, and nothing was changing. It was four months of this. So I read this book called Letting Go, and I just finally realized that you have to surrender to what's happening. And if something is happening to you, it's, it's, it's because it needs to be there. Like it, there's a lesson in it for you. And I learned so many lessons with this condo sale and just so many things. I made many, many mistakes with this home, but it was my first home buying experience. And now I know so much more. And because of all the stress of this, I actually started to learn a lot more things about the mortgage industry and financial services and just an overall financial education. But here we are, I'm stressed, I'm financially stressed, I can't get the house sold. And I was working with Mahi, I read this book and I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna try to do this. Literally, I'm gonna try to do this. And I was like, you know what? If I have to literally move to California into a house that yes is mine, but I literally can't afford it. I don't have a job or I'm looking for a job. I'll make it work. I'll make it work, right? You just gotta make it work. I'll get a blow up mattress. I will get some pots and pans and cutlery and kitchen things for my friends. Some things that, you know, uh, goodwill and I'll do it cheap. I'll live there. I'll work two part-time jobs if I have to until I can figure this out and get it sold again. And I went to bed that night really feeling like, you know what, it won't be the end of the world and maybe it'll be a fun adventure if I have to do that. So then what happened is the next day I suddenly get an offer on the condo. It's a little bit lower than what I want, so we counter it. They take 24 hours to respond to our counter and within those 24 hours, we get two more offers. So now there's a three person bidding war after it had been radio silent for four months. You guys, I cannot make this up. I swear, I swear, like I had manifested, meditated, whatever hippy dippy words you wanna use, new moon energy, none of it worked during the four months until I literally went to bed feeling like I'll just move in and it's not gonna be a big deal. And like that, I swear to you, three offers, we're into a bidding war, and eventually I get the house sold for over asking. So this stuff works, you guys. From someone that was never able to silence his mind or even believe that there was such a thing as energy, which is now scientifically proven, I, I'm so grateful for all of these things happening because now it's led me down this path and I'm really trying to change some of my own habits and just upgrade myself. I think that's what life is all about, right? We're all like kind of like playing a video game and we should always try to like level up ourselves. So. That's also why I didn't want to speak so poorly during those months of Emirates because when I do decide to talk about my full experience, I want it to be with a fair lens. There are some things that are not good about working for that company. There's no denying that. You can go on TikTok and YouTube and find tons of bloggers and vloggers that share um, you know, some really disappointing stories and some truths of what it's really like to be a cabin crew for that company. But there's also so many amazing things about it. So you have to look at things objectively. Um, so I wanted to make sure before I ever did that, that that's how I will approach it because I loved my time working there. And speaking of that, I have finally started to get some time to edit all of my footage. I know some of you are laughing right now. And I promise you on my Instagram account, if you guys aren't already following me, please follow me at Flex Around the World. Like, yes, like Flex. We're gonna flex around the world together. It's about travel, it's about fitness, it's about flexing your life, it's about living. You know what's funny is I, I 
created that name because I wasn't the fittest person that I am today. And I used to be the kid that felt intimidated uh, and I was made fun of. And then I decided to stop complaining and I hired a personal trainer and I spent years studying to get where I am today. So people I just want to make sure that I commend Mahi enough for what she's doing. I really think it's worth it to invest in yourself. I think the most important thing you can spend money on is yourself um, in, in a good way, you know, like healthy food, uh, personal growth. Okay, maybe some skincare, you know, but these are things, a gym membership, these are things you should spend money on. Food and alcohol and everything, that's where you should budget. But things that are gonna improve your life and give you a good return on investment, that's worth it. And coaching, especially right now, if you're feeling a little bit lost or you just want some guidance on how to be a better version of yourself or you want some hand-holding with going through some difficult moments so you can move past them and live a more beautiful life and positive life. So if you're feeling that way, reach out to her. I highly recommend you book a session with her. It really helped me and I have nothing but gratitude in my heart. I don't really have anything else to say. 24 minutes, okay. I have some vlogs that I hope I still have the footage of, of like packing up my place in Dubai, also an apartment tour, um, and kind of what it was like to have to pack up your life and leave the country. That'll be a fun vlog to get edited out for you guys. So you guys can kind of see what the experience is. And you know, I have no idea what it's gonna be like now for a new cabin crew to work at Emirates once they resume full operations and this pandemic is well in the past. It's gonna be interesting to see if they go back to you know, how we were operating, the amount of destinations we were operating to. I wonder what it's gonna be like, but you know, like is the 380 gonna still exist? Because when I was there, they were already thinking of getting smaller planes and saying it was only gonna last about another 10 years. So if that's the case, I mean, man, how, how awesome and how grateful am I to have that experience of being able to have worked and operated on that Goliath of a plane, you know? Um, that's one of a kind. And there'll never be something like that, you know, again. So that's pretty cool. And all the places I went to, I just, I'm so glad for all of the good memories I have. And yes, there's some bad ones, but that's gonna be, you know, with everything. And it was hard to come back to the US and I really, you know, missed the hotel lifestyle and being in a new city and that excitement. Um, you know, it was kind of like an adult college. I was there for, basically over four years. So it really was like my adult college. You know, I went to real college as a young adult and this was like my adult adult college. I met so many amazing people from all over the world. I mean, I just had experiences that would have never happened. And it's just funny because at 23, you know, I had never even traveled internationally aside from Canada and Mexico. At 25, I had just started traveling, but I still didn't know where Dubai was. It wasn't until about 26, 27 that I learned about Emirates Airlines. So it's just funny how if you look back at your life, you can see all the ways and all the pivots that you've taken. But I really feel like that's the universe kind of giving you signs. And when you release yourself to not controlling things so much and having a vision for what you want, but not like worrying about the path to get there, that's when I feel like things start to just open up for you. I mean, it was a decision like this when I was 25 that I decided to leave LA and travel. And that turned into me becoming a backpacker, turned into me leaving acting because that's what I was doing at the time, um, packing up my apartment in LA, traveling for over three months. Then I went to Thailand for a month. Then I ended up living in Australia. That's where I really decided I wanted to work for Emirates when I was done living there. So this all snowballed. And then I eventually worked as a cabin crew for four years, which would have never happened if, you know, at 25, I had never decided to you know what, let me take that trip to Europe that I've never taken. So it's crazy. So I just recommend if you've been struggling during this pandemic, let's try to help you come out of this positive because I think this year so many bad things happened to all of us that we really wanna come out and be proud of a couple things. 
And those couple things can really improve our lives for the next couple years. And for me, that was really working on myself and personal growth and expanding my mind to just learning how to live a better life. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, guys, I th it's good. Try it out. Try it out. Just try it out. I'm telling you, this is coming from someone that never wanted to meditate, never wanted to do yoga. And now I'm into all of these things. I mean, look at me. I'm doing a vlog about like gratitude and letting go and the universe, which five years ago, I would have never even said that word unless I was actually talking about outer space. So those are my long thoughts, stream of conscious for you for the day. I'm gonna get you guys this footage. I'm really excited for you to take a walk down some of the best years of my life with me. And thanks for listening. And I'm wishing you guys all the best. Cheers.